Is this coming out of the speakers? There we go, perfect. All right. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, my name is uh, David Easter. I'm the product line manager at Marantis. And as a product manager, I'll let you know that uh, some people think of what's the worst possible thing that can happen is failure. And actually, for me, the worst thing that can happen is to succeed, but succeed only once. You want to be able to succeed more than once. And so my presentation here today is about what happens if you're successful in your first implementation of OpenStack, then what happens? So I'll kind of go over it. I've only got 15 minutes, so I'm not going to give you all the answers, but this is more of a teaser. Get your mind in gear. Think about things that, uh, that you can take with you to other parts of the uh, convention today and tomorrow. So today I'll cover the uh, challenges that you have, uh, kind of cover the, the ideas that uh, you run into when you've been successful only once, talk about uh, once you've been that successful once and you're asked to repeat yourself and be able to be successful more than one time, what are the next steps you need to do? And in, in there, you need to think about deployment. So prior to the installation, you know, what are you going to do before the deployment? Make all the choices you need to make. Then there's the actual deployment itself. And what are you going to make your choices about how to do the deployment? Then there's the once you've actually deployed it, how will you make sure that deployment is successful? How will you care and, and feed and maintain that deployment moving forward in terms of operations and ongoing? And then when you get to the next version of, uh, of the, the situation, how are you going to patch and upgrade the, uh, the deployment that you've done? So here's the challenges. So OpenStack is an amazing technology. It's an amazing project. It's an amazing uh, community that's come together to be able to create it. Um, but you talk to many people, it is very difficult to install at times. Um, it's similar in, in some ways to, to having a child. It's fun at the very beginning, then there's months of uh, waiting and pain and, and uh, difficulties. Finally, something comes out. And then you've got another 21 years to be able to maintain that. So you have to raise it from there. But um, so it, it's, it's very difficult. It's very challenging. The documentation certainly is there on the community. But uh, it's not always the, the, the easiest way to be able to understand how to do your deployment. So there's challenges there. Um, next part is that once it's actually deployed, there's very limited resources and limited information that's out there in the community about how to keep your operation up and going, how to make sure it's running at peak efficiency, how to make sure it's the most efficient that's there. Um, you, know, you want to be able to make sure that you're meeting your SLAs, meeting your business requirements, and what's out there in the community to be able to help with that. Uh, after that, you know, we find that, again, successful only once is not sufficient. Uh, organizations and businesses are doing multiple clouds, even within the same company or within the same organization, and need to be able to take that uh, success and be able to repeat it over and over again and do it successfully every single time. And then finally, you know, once you've actually deployed a cloud, depending how long it took you, by the time you've actually deployed a particular version of, of your cloud environment, there's probably a new version that's already available, whether that's a major version, depending how long it took, or even minor version. There's versions that come out uh, you know, every few weeks or so. And what are you going to do to keep up with the community, a very fast-paced and, and uh, accelerated and very invigorating community? How do you keep up with what they're producing for your environment? So, Prior to installation, so on your first cloud, you probably cobbled together some hardware and you found some you know, old devices in your closets and got it all together and, and were able to put it up. Once you actually are asked to, 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 to uh, duplicate that and create a production cloud or create another, uh, you know, more than a POC of your environment, um, it's going to take some time to get the actual physical hardware to be able to do that successfully, whether it's actually at the company already or you have to order it and buy it and bring it in. Um, so, so one of the things that you should think about when you're starting to roll out your second and further clouds is getting that, that hardware. You know, what's, what's, going to have, what's it going to take to get the appropriate hardware? You're going to have to also make decisions, obviously, about the hardware itself as well, you know, what kind of hardware you're going to use. <clears throat> Next big thing that we run to uh, at Marantis is the biggest chunk of time is the network setup, the network uh, environment, the network configuration. And that will take up most likely 60 to 70% of your time getting everything set up properly to be able to have uh, the, the OpenStack uh, components communicate with each other properly. So that's really big. Don't discount how long that's going to take. That's going to take quite a while. And one of the challenges that happens there is that you've got communication between um, groups. So you've got to talk between your, your server group, for example, and your network group. So you have to make sure that those are all uh, there and those communication paths are open at the beginning. And then, of course, there's the actual configuration of the servers themselves. So you have to make sure you have time to actually go in there and make sure the BIOS is correct, the firmware, the hardware configuration parameters are all set properly. So, so what are some ideas that you can do to prepare that? So um, the one thing you want to do is pre-plan, like I said, your hardware requirements. And we've actually got a utility that's up on our website that lets you pick the right hardware for your OpenStack configuration. Make your decisions about how you're going to do your deployment. Will it be highly available, which means you'll need multiple controllers for your high availability. What kind of networking service do you want to use? Do you want to stay with Nova Network? Do you want to start using Neutron? If you do Neutron, do you want to do GRE or VLAN segmentation? So make all these decisions up front before you actually start doing your deployment. 
figure out once you've got your hardware out there what each of those hardware um, items are going to be in terms of roles. Is it going to be a controller? Is it going to be a storage node? Is it, will it be uh, a standalone network node? Uh, will it be a compute node? You know, make your choices ahead of time about what you're going to be doing there. Will a node be completely standalone? Will it be a combined role on that? So make those choices way in advance so you know exactly what you're deploying and how you're going to deploy it. Make your, uh, your, like I said, your networking decisions up front. So create your networking address plan, lay out your VLANs, lay out your network information, um, not only at the, the physical level and the, uh, the network level, but also at a logical level. So which, which uh, VLANs are going to be used for communication for admin, which uh, networks are going to be used for storage, which are going to be your public networks. Is there going to be uh, communication to the internet, et cetera? Plan all that out way ahead of time, because that's going to save you a lot of time and effort, having written it down and having that, that sheet available to you. Once you've got all that, that pre-installation work done, now you've actually got to do the deployment. And here again, you've got a whole bunch of choices. There's lots of deployment technologies that are out there. Uh, some of them uh, are more advanced than others. Some of them uh, allow more flexibility than others. So you know, take a look at all the deployment options that are out there uh, and uh, look at your criteria for what you need out of a deployment technology and, and make those decisions uh, before you actually go do the deployment itself. So here's some factors to consider in terms of deployment. So one of the first ones is, uh, you know, do you like working with CLI? Do you like working at the command line? Do you like you know, kind of the OS level interaction? Or do you really prefer a UI? Do you prefer kind of a, a graphical user experience that guides you through the deployment of, of your OpenStack environment? So make, the, you know, make that choice. That's a personal choice. Um, as you pick the deployment technology, can you call somebody for help? Is the, is the community or the environment uh, around who created that deployment technology, are they easily available, readily available to answer your questions? Uh, if there's something, uh, I have a question about how to use the, uh, the technology or even if there becomes a, an error or a, a bug or a defect in that technology, can somebody respond quickly to that need? So think about that when you're picking your deployment technology. Um, is it flexible? Can you, can you make the, the uh, deployment technology do what you want it to do or is it, is it rigid? Will it only deploy in a certain way onto a particular uh, configuration? Um, can you run it on your own hardware initially? So there are some de deployment technologies that are linked to a particular hardware configuration, uh, OS, hypervisor, uh, all the way up to the guest OS. And the, you know, is that what you want in your deployment technology, or do you need something that's, that's more configurable, more extensible, more enhanceable uh, for your business needs? Uh, how much automation do you require? Is this something that you're going to be doing a 1,000 times or just twice? Uh, so uh, how much automation needs to be part of this uh, deployment technology? How much? How much effort uh, can you put into it in a manual process and how much do you be able to do this through an API or some sort of automated orchestration? Can you actually deploy multiple environments from the same utility? I mean, we find that, uh, again, customers and organizations are deploying multiple clouds uh, into multiple data centers and you need to be able to have that capability in certain cases or it's all in one place, it's all one cloud, then perhaps you can use something that's more silo oriented to be able to get your deployment in place. And then is the, is the process easily repeatable? Can you do it again and again and again and be successful every time? So some things to think about in terms of deployment. So now you've actually got it deployed. Now it's post-deployment. So the cloud is up and running. Did you deploy it successfully? You know, have you done run all the tests against it? Have, is it does, can it be used in real-world environments? Now Tempest is, is excellent at just testing the APIs and making sure that things are running at a basic level. But perhaps you need something a bit more. Perhaps you need something that runs real-world use cases to be able to test the OpenStack environment uh, under business workloads with the real-world use cases for, for what your customers are actually going to use this for. So you're probably going to need a tool that does more advanced tests against high availability. Is your, is your cloud resilience? Is it going to survive uh, in, in the case of a failure? Um, what about all the platform services that are on your OpenStack environment? Because obviously, we know infrastructure isn't there just for infrastructure's sake. You need to have some sort of business workload on top of it, and that's where platform services come up and you're gonna need some sort of testing capability for those platform services. And then for the, the monitoring capabilities, so Solometer is, is incredible, it's excellent, but it's, it's, it's in its infancy, and it's certainly, it's growing, it's adding maturity, it's adding additional capabilities as it moves onwards. It's, it's you know, finally in, in integrated status in terms of, uh, of Havana, but uh, from a monitoring standpoint, you may need something more in your network to be able to get the information you need from your environment to make decisions around your business or your organization. So, um, and for example, you may want to have something in terms of thresholding where as a value goes above a particular level, take a particular action, you know, take an action against the OpenStack to change a parameter or to, uh, to or do a different orchestration. And when that happens, it leads you down the path of self-healing. And uh, there are technologies and there are capabilities for monitoring tools that are out there that do this today, 
uh, and obviously OpenStack as a, as a community project will catch up with that, but something to consider if you're really putting a, a business workloads into your OpenStack environment, you need something to be able to do that monitoring. Then there's the, the ongoing operations, so you know, the day-to-day -day care and feeding of your OpenStack environment. Um, how do you add nodes to your OpenStack cloud? How do you remove nodes from your OpenStack cloud? I mean, the, one of the values of OpenStack is the elastic nature of, of the technology. So uh, if you have a, a workloads that have exceeded the, the capacity of your OpenStack cloud, you want to add additional nodes. How easy is it to do that? How, you know, make the decisions and make the ideas of how you're going to accomplish that as you move forward. Um, there may be situations in your organization where you actually want to allow uh, end users or developers to create their own clouds for short periods of time and be able to then tear those down. How automated is that process and, and how can you do that very easily and continuously within your organization? And then from a cloud operations standpoint, you've got the uh, you know, gathering information about the cloud itself. How big is my cloud? What kind of nodes are out there? What are the roles that are being done in those nodes? Um, how's the performance that's going on? How are the configuration parameters that are in place? Is the cloud running as efficiently as possible? All those are things that your cloud operations team is going to have to do uh, to be able to keep that cloud up and going. So you know, think about that when you're, you're thinking about deploying your second or, or X number of clouds. You're going to have to have an operations group that as it has those tools available to them and knows how to use them and, and take advantage of them. So again, the OpenStack cloud, it just, you know, OpenStack train, excuse me, just keeps on rolling. I mean, there's uh, release after release after release. And again, it's not just the major releases, it's also the, the maintenance releases, the bug fixes, the security fixes. So, is your organization set up to do CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment? Um, do you want to draw down from trunk every single time it's available uh, and be able to, to in, uh, integrate anything that you've got within there? Um, you know, can you keep up with that six to eight week release process and bring down that code, be able to test it and get it out deployed every single time? And think about if you've got your own uh, unique uh, advancements or extensions you're doing to your environment, it's going to be geometric in terms of the amount of time it takes to be able to keep up with that. So because you have to download uh, from the trunk, put in your fixes in there as well, and retest everything to make sure that not only do your fixes work properly, but you haven't broken anything in the community. So really something to think about. How much CICD do you want to be able to do as an organization? And you get, <clears throat> excuse me, get on to patching. So again, patches, you know, the maintenance releases that come out. Um, patching is typically done through uh, you know, in-place patching, so you know, it takes the resiliency of OpenStack into consideration. You can take down a service for a very short amount of time, patch it. Typically, patches will allow you for backwards compatibility. But you know, it's something to think about in terms of the availability of your operation. You know, can you have a maintenance window to be able to make that, uh, that changeover if the patch requires some sort of loss of availability or, or bringing down of a service within OpenStack? Um, usually relatively painless, but you know, something to consider. And if you're successful and you have a, a, an OpenStack environment that's out there, you're going to have to keep in mind. You're going to have to patch it very continuously. Then finally, upgrade, which is you know, the, 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 the big issue that comes up. Now at Marantis, we found that probably the safest distill uh, methodology for doing upgrades is to create a parallel uh, OpenStack. Now you don't have to use up the entire, you don't have to, don't have to duplicate all the resources in, in the, your, your second cloud. You can steal some resources from your initial cloud, build your second cloud, and then start to migrate workloads over. And we find that that's, that's very successful, relatively low risk, and, uh, and, and leads to the, the best possibility of success. But uh, you know, something to think about, so when you create your first cloud, always leave a little bit of capacity available or know that your upgrade's coming up, you may have to add a little bit of capacity into your environment to be able to uh, plan that second cloud, make that up and running, and uh, be sure that you can do that upgrade successfully. Um, you know, again, it's, it, it doesn't have to be a, a major disruption in your environment, it could be a switch over relatively quickly, but it really is something that you need to consider uh, to make sure your successful deployments continue forward. So, <clears throat> You know, just in summary, you know, again, hopefully it's got you some ideas to think about you know, when you're moving on for your, your second and your additional clouds that are there. So you know, again, the stressing, plan ahead of time. Don't uh, you know, just assume it's going to be an easy process. Go in there, plan the network, plan the hardware resources, plan the roles for your nodes, plan what you're going to do within the environment ahead of time. It will save you a lot of pain and anguish as you move forward. Um, make the right choice about your deployment utility. Pick one that fits your environment, that fits your organization, that fits your personality, shall we say to be able to do the deployment in a way that you're comfortable with so you can be successful in accomplishing it. Once you've actually done the deployment, make sure all the tools are available for monitoring, for ongoing operations, for be able to make sure that that cloud is working as efficiently as it can, and, and make sure that those are all available to your operations uh, environment or your operation uh, resources to be able to be successful. And then once you've got the clouds up there and going, you know, start thinking right away about how you're gonna do patches, how you're gonna do upgrades, how you're going to keep this, uh, this project 
going forward at the right version level and take advantage of the innovation that's out there in the community. Um, it'll really save you a lot of time in the future. So uh, you know, that's for my presentation. You know, obviously, I do represent Mirantis, so I've got some you know, resource uh, information up here. And we think that we solve a lot of these problems for you uh, as a deployment and managing and operations technology uh, from uh, the Mirantis OpenStack product that we sell. Um, so I encourage you to go to our website, take a look at it, and uh, we have a lot of resources and utilities that are there to be able to help you do a lot of the planning that I just talked about. So again, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great conference.